I'm gonna say about 90% or more of all the large domestic beers that are out there only represent one style of beer. I think the real issue that we've had in the past, you know, I wanna say 40 years at this point, probably even more, is that that American adjunct lager was the only style that was pushed upon the American palate. There's literally 100 different types of beers out there, so with so much variety, why sell yourself short and only stick to one beer? We felt that you know Miami needs an identity when it comes to beer, and there really hadn't been a, a production brewery uh, putting beer on shelves uh, in Miami yet. So we uh, we f we sought to uh, really create that of what, what, what was lacking in the industry. Here in Florida, um, we're just seeing exponential growth because we haven't been exposed to too much craft beer until this past couple of years, where breweries like ourselves started to open up and distribute throughout the state. We were very we were very late. We were very late to the game completely late into the game. It's still trying, we're still trying to get, I'm still trying to get people to to know about what good beers are still out there. You know, not just your locally, just, you know, your Belgians, your, you know, your Stouts and stuff like that. There's, there's so much out there. As it starts to grow, and now there's breweries all over South Florida, um, from the Barrel of Oats to Winwood, all of these guys, Concrete Beach that have opened up, they're introducing people to these new flavors that they haven't had before. And that, in turn, brings them to me, or takes mine to them. Uh, the craft beer scene in South Florida has exploded over the last uh, eight years or so. So there wasn't a lot of education before. They started out with, um, with neighborhood breweries teaching people the benefits of craft beer and why uh, craft beer is a, is a great product. And uh, so it's got to start locally, and it's got to start with those breweries. And I think the fact that so many breweries have opened in South Florida is just part of the attribution of why craft beer continues to grow down here. I love changing people and and seeing them keep coming back and coming back here. It's not about selling beer, it's about moving the beer and how, how crazy people get with coming in and getting the beers. Tours are a really big part of educating people onto what we're doing and why our product is in a lot of ways superior to a lot of the other products that are out there. Welcome to Funky Buddha Brewery. My name is Adrian. I'm gonna be doing a tour for you guys today. It takes four ingredients to make beer, water, barley, hops, and yeast. So when we're ready to move on to the next step of the brewing process, the grain is gonna shoot up another pipe and fall inside of our mash tub. Before we talk about uh, the bright tank and finishing up our beer, let's talk about our barrel aging program over here. And these are some of the most highly sought after beers in the craft beer industry right now. And so now it's really neat to see younger kids coming in here and experiencing beers and knowing about the different styles. And also, when I serve somebody uh, a sample of Hop Gun IPA and they've never had it before, they think they don't like IPAs and I convert them. Uh, you know, IPA is a very popular style and a lot of people are getting exposed to it, but it's been around for a little while now and so to see them like the IPAs and start with that and then maybe branch out to a brown or, or Belgian style and figure out what they like next and what might be something to follow up an old beer with uh, is really exciting to me to see, especially in Florida. I almost saw one time a grown man cry because the beer ran out. And that, that's funny to me, but also very good too, just because people want, it, want craft beer so bad. And, and it took Miami a while for it to be like that. The South Florida, I feel, is a bit unique in the way that we have a very big Central and South American influence, and what that enables South Florida brewers to do, and, and what I've seen the, the skill set from South Florida brewers is they're really utilizing the, the the flavors and the you know the kind of like tropical, especially tropical fruits that we have in abundance down here. Historically, Winwood's a Puerto Rican neighborhood, and that's where Luis and Pops are, are from. They're Puerto Rican, but at the same time, there's so much change. There's so much culture. It's a great spot for a millennials and people that we feel are in our demographic that would be willing to try new things like craft beer. I think pushing the boundaries of, of brewing and brewing techniques and adding natural ingredients and kind of these strange combinations uh, is part of the draw for what we do. It definitely gets people excited. If we put honey in a beer, we taste 10 different kinds of honey and find exactly the kind of honey we want. We find somebody local, like our honey we use here comes from Loxahashman. 
we find somebody local that's using the good stuff here and we decide that's what we want to use. Our, our Berliner um, Bohemian Raspberry use fresh raspberry puree from a farmer's market down in Coconut Grove. So we definitely incorporate, you know, a lot of local ingredients in our R&D and, uh, and new beers that come out. We have the luxury of being able to get fresh Florida orange peel and every brewer I feel like uses fresh Florida orange peel or like blood oranges or some unique aspect of Florida even on beer styles that are traditional. We are very connected to our product. So many of my headaches each day are really the biggest reasons I got into it. But I love my job and I wake up every day happy to do it. Um, it's, really, it's really a passion. It's, it's, this isn't something you do to just get a check and leave. My favorite thing about craft beer, and this is going to sound pretty corny, is actually the people. Uh, I have never met so many cool people in my entire life than the people who work here in the brewery, the people who work for our other craft breweries. Amazing. Being in this industry, we're able to have fun because this is an industry where people enjoy themselves. You go out to eat, you go out to drink, and you're having a good time, and we're in like a feel-good type of uh, market. The growth of craft beer in South Florida, whether it's at breweries or not, can definitely be attributed to how many breweries have opened up. You've had breweries like um, MIA and Biscayne uh, Bay out in Doral open up, Jay Wakefield down the street, Concrete Beach, and that's just, you know, in a couple months. Your neighborhood brewery, you know, down the street from you is where you're gonna get exposed to craft beer. It's where most people in the country have been exposed to craft beer. There are so many breweries in planning and really it all starts with the home brewing scene. I mean, that's what we started and that's where we continue to see growth is people getting interested in brewing beer. The state of Florida is one of the fastest growing markets for craft beer. I just see us continuing to grow. It seems like a new brewery is opening up every single month in South Florida. I don't see any end in sight now that the people of, Flo of South Florida have gotten a taste of something better. The people that went into the business for the passion of it are going to thrive and survive. And the people that went in just for the business aspect of it are going to find out in five years once the competition becomes fierce enough just because of, uh, you know, of volume that they're not producing to the quality that the consumers are demanding. That's a problem too. There's so many microbreweries out there that some customers are getting afraid because they've gotten burnt on a bad six pack or a bad bottle or something just because a lot of people are not there yet. There's still some, there's too many and they're not fully there. I think when finally in a couple years when everything kind of gets like evened out, you'll see who really is good and not good. And if they don't learn how to produce the beers that people want, they're gonna lose business and eventually go away.